The following podcast is a next level production. My favorite thing to do as a girl was flower picking with my mother. After she died, I kept one to remember her by. One day, it started to wilt. I held that flower. I don't know why exactly, but I began to feel warm inside, and the flower bloomed again. Hey, Pamlers. Welcome to the show. I'm Steve. And I'm Lara, as Istrid pronounces it. <laughs> and this is going to be a spoilerful podcast of the sixth episode of The Witcher Season 2, entitled Dear Friend. Lara, why don't you give us our synopsis for this one? Yeah, we do find out uh, what Dear Friend means to some of the characters in this episode. Mm -hmm. And the synopsis is, a close friend is lost and another is found as Geralt helps Ciri learn more about her power. Kahir warns Frangilla to focus on their primary mission. Yeah, yeah. This was an interesting episode. When I watched it the second time, I, I think I got a better appreciation for it than the first time. But there's still, there's one huge thing that I'll get to uh, in my notes that really bothered me that I hope they clear up in the last couple of episodes. But uh, uh, but overall, I thought it was it was okay. What did you think of it? Well, there was no Yaskir in it. So, you know, I feel something's missing when he's not in the episode. <laughs> but we did get a lot more re revelations in the episode, so I give it like an 8.5 out of 10 or boculums or, or buculums, whatever those things were. Oh, oh, oh. Was, that that, was that that thing that, that Siri was trying to figure out yeah. that could sense magic? The floating okay. bowling ball. Yeah, oh. The powerful tool. Yeah. <laughs> that she tried to use as a mace or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Um, well, we do have some new new faces and places that we want to talk about. Um, the first one is the Temple School, which is a place of learning and magic for midwives, historians, healers, and witchers, where witchers learn their magical signs. Great. And uh, we also get to meet Nenica, the, head, the uh, headmistress of the Temple School, obviously one of Geralt's old teachers. Mm -hmm. And we meet uh, Jare or Jara. I, I didn't understand I the pronunciation Jare. of his... Jare. Jare, okay, Jare, uh, one of the best students at the Temple School and an historian in training and uh, a uncomfortable young man around. So. <laughs> that we'll, was cute. We'll, <laughs> it was. We also get to meet um, Codringer and Fen and Esmeralda, book, bookshop owners, I think, or maybe my, like kind of like a researchers of some sort of rare and antiquated collections. They assist Istrid in the search for answers about Calanthe's genealogy, and Esmeralda is their shop cat, but she was initially mistaken for Fen. Yeah, yeah. And we finally get an explanation of uh, Lara, Lara Doran, which is, even though we don't see her in this episode, but we do get the name and the backstory of the elf from series uh, Dolduza. That was what that vision is called, the Dolduza when, when Triss was there. Okay, in the last episode, uh, she is the warrior elf who killed her human mage lover and cursed her bloodline, creating a generational warrior to destroy the humans. And we'll talk more about that Yes, when we get into the discussion points, because I'm sure we both both have uh, things of that for uh, for discussion. Um, so we will get started going right into our top five. In whatever we made from it, it's more dangerous than we know. What's wrong, Fesme? Someone. What is it? It's here. What's happened? Who's here? <laughs> Surprise. Laura, why don't you kick us off? Okay, my number five highlight was the power dynamics in Sintra between Kahane and Frangilla. So, Kahane, or did I say Kahane? Kahir. Kahir has Kahir. returned to Sintra. Uh, Frangilla has been in power for a little while now, and they're vying for power. Um, 
he's kind of using the soldiers and the white flame as his leverage, while she is using Francesca and the elves as hers. On on his side, the, the soldiers, the army, the Nilfgaard army, are not happy with all these elves coming in and taking over things. They're not happy with Frangilla kind of usurping his power role since he's been gone. And on her side, Frangilla is basically a savior to the elves. She goes and greets them as they come off of the boats. She, you know, they, uh, Francesca basically says this is the person who is providing you sanctuary, who's saving you from all these other northern kingdoms. And she also saved Francesca's baby, basically, when they thought that, that the child was stillborn and that she was going to have another, um, you know, child that didn't live mm -hmm. to through her birth and and then frangilla brings her back in without any magic you know just just warmth yeah yeah i love that and this was one of mine as well so i'll just i'll i'll, I'll do my first discussion point as some of the, the same kind of things is the, i i call it the politics of zentria or centra uh because you know francesca is basically trying to convince frangilla to kind of take over or take power from the white flame because the elves are starting to outnumber the humans is what is the gist that I'm getting is that the, the elves are starting to outnumber them. And, you know, Phil, Phil, I can't say his name. Phil, Phil. is, is <laughs> Phil, Philly Phil is, is, uh, is training the, uh, the elves in human, uh, fighting tactics, which I thought was another kind of interesting conversation because it doesn't seem like he fully trusts Nilfgaard, but he's going to go along with it as long as Francesca is the one she's, you know, she's the leader now and, and he's going to follow her will, whatever she wants him to do, you know, uh, but we do get that reminder. And I think, I don't know if we talked about it in the last episode or not, because I had totally forgotten that the whole point of Nilfgaard taking Sintra was to capture Siri. That was the, the whole the whole reason for it was that the whole reason they attacked and took over the city was to capture Siri and they didn't get her. And so Kahir, as you mentioned in the synopsis, is trying to get Frangilla back on that that primary mission of getting Siri. Now whether and you know the, I think it was uh to say uh, at the end who started it or one of them was talking about the importance of Siri and why different people would want her. And I don't know if Kahir, obviously he knows she has some sort of power because he was there when, when she shattered the monolith, but I don't know if he's passed that on to anybody yet, you know? So I'm not, but he, like I said, he reminds that whether it's for political reasons or for magic reasons or for whatever, he's, he's trying to get them kind of back on course. And of course we get that revelation at the end that the white flame is coming and we're going to actually have maybe get him on screen. I mean, we only got two episodes left, mm -hmm. so a, a lot's got to happen in these last two episodes. So yeah, that whole confrontation yeah. between Kahir and Frangilla kind of gave me game of Thrones vibes where, you know, you have these two political opponents talking, mm -hmm. talking very uh, politely to one another, but really, you know, there's these undertones of a power struggle and, and, you know, he's telling her, you know, all these uh, elves have hope. What are they going to do when they realize they won't need us, when they start to propagate on their own and, and they don't need us anymore? And, um, you know, and then he drops the big bomb on Frangilla that the, the white flame is on his way here. So it's like, <laughs> dad's coming home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I it didn't occur to me until today when I was rewatching the episodes that both shows I'm covering, uh, Snowpiercer and The Witcher, both had births in the uh -huh. episodes this week because Snowpiercer just had a baby born uh, on on that show as well this week. It didn't occur to me until today. I was like, wow, <laughs> both shows are it's so strange. But yeah, so that was my that was my first one as well. Uh, so what's what's your next point? Uh, my number four is simply Siri. We got a lot of information about Siri this time, and I thought the funniest thing mm -hmm. was the very beginning where she's acting like most teenagers, of which I am familiar, having one myself. Uh, sometimes she's so delightfully idealistic and energetic and hopeful, and sometimes she's just a little shit. <laughs> And she's sitting there on Roach <laughs> yeah. as they're walking through the, the forest. And she's like throwing jabs at, at Geralt saying, you never listen to me. You don't care what I think. La, la, la. Ra, ra, ra. <laughs> Geralt's just walking oh, are along. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Trying to ignore her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then we do get a cool scene of her helping out Geralt uh, for the first time with his monster hunting. 
And uh, we get a Chernabog coming after them. It was the same one that, that flew out of the, the chasm in uh, Sintra. And, uh, I mean, she's basically being his bait, so she's not <laughs> she's not yeah. really fighting against it. But it, it took a lot of courage for her to stand there and not run away and let it come after her. Yeah, and he gives her that compliment, you know, that she stood her ground and he was proud of her. So I, I, I was really, you know, thankful for the, having that moment with him. It was a short battle, but uh, I'll talk about that more in one of my other points. But since you brought up Siri, I have a point all about Siri that I want us to discuss because this is this was my part of the episode that gave me just both times I watched it, I was just like, what is going on? Does Siri have like a GPS locator sh- chip? in her or something because like rinse shows up at, at Karen just from a quick comment that Yaskier uh-huh. makes about a witcher keep somewhere in the mountains. Right. And that's enough for him to show up at Karen When I thought Karen was supposed to be this like hidden. Yeah. S- it's hard to place, find, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then not only does he show up there, but he recognizes the vial of blood and steals it and then acts like that was the whole reason why he went there anyway, was to get this blood. And I'm like, how did he even know that they took her blood? How did he know that that was her blood? What Did he just pick it up thinking, oh, this is something interesting. And then maybe when he got back to his place, he figured out it was serious. I, I don't know. And then when he's meeting with Lydia, Lydia says very Ocean's Eleven style, you're going to need a crew to get into that temple. And I'm like, we didn't even know they were at the temple yet. <laughs> How does Lydia know she's at the temple? And then Yennefer shows up at the temple as well. So it's like everybody knows exactly where Siri is all the time. Then why is everybody looking for her <laughs> if they know exactly where she is? I don't. Fine. Siri is on everyone's find my, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's, I'm just, I'm watching the thing going, wait a minute. How does, how do they know that she's there? And wasn't the whole point of going to the temple was they were trying to hide out, but yet everybody knows <laughs> where they are. And I'm like, uh, and so maybe the witch knew where she was. And I, I don't know, but that was, it just, that was the one thing that really, really bugged me was that it just seemed like, Rince has all this knowledge about this blood and he's, we have to rework the terms of our deal, yes. you know, with Lydia. And, and I'm just like, how do you even know that's her blood? <laughs> yeah, well, so. for Jennifer, I don't know. I'm guessing maybe she got some hints from the, the witch and how, who knows how much she knows. But um, for Rince, I was thinking that he might have all, I don't know how he found Care Moran. You have a good point there that Care Moran is supposed to be such a secretive place. And yes, he just portals in. But once I actually thought that he was overhearing um, Tris talk to, to um, blah, go back to my yes, Vesmir, my giant list of names. Yeah, yeah she was talking <laughs> to him a bit, and they kind of mentioned, well, they. I think she mentioned something about the blood, but she definitely mentioned that they might have gone to um, Nenica's. And if this is a well-known school, then maybe people know that Nenica is the the okay. headmistress of the school. And, I don't know. That's the only thing I could think of okay. is that he might have overheard them talking before he attacked them. He does say that he did a spy mission to Care Moran. So, yeah, maybe he was there longer. Mm-hmm. Than, than what we're shown and that, okay, I'll maybe give it to him a little bit. But I just, it's still, it's still, I'm just like, why does everybody just show up? It's true. I don't know. Yes. I don't know how, so. especially how Yennefer found out where she was. Yeah. The, and how did Yennefer get there? Because she couldn't, have, she didn't have magic. So unless the witch portaled her yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, because, port- yeah, I mean, these places have to be far you know, far apart from each other. So it must have mm-hmm. taken Yana for quite a while to get there, you know, by regular human travel. Yeah. You would think so. Uh, yeah. So that was, that was my next one was just more about Siri and her, her whole GPS locator thing. Yeah. Well, I had a cute couple other um, points about Siri. I just thought it was really nice that she finally opened up to Geralt about the boys that she killed. You know, she was, uh, she hadn't told that to anybody. And so it shows some um, level of trust between them that she's finally able to admit to him that that she killed some people. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, she has a heart to heart with Nenica. She's telling her about how her, again, how her grandmother just hated the elves. And and Nenica says to her, you know, well, you know, 
you may be the thing that kind of can end that cycle of hatred, which is something that is brought up quite a bit about Siri is that, you know, she has the power within her to, you know, destroy humanity or possibly bring it together. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. So what was your next one? My highlight number three was Istrid's mission. So we see mm -hmm. Istrid, I think he's in, I can't tell if he's in um, Sintra still or if he's gone to another town, but he heads into this shop and it's uh, the, on the door window. It says it's the shop of Codringer and Fenn. Um, we find out these two new characters um, played, one is played by Simon Callow, who is another Outlander alumni. So we have two Outlander oh. alumni on the show now. And uh, he was recently on Hawkeye as Armand the Third. If you recognized him. Oh, okay. Very cool. <laughs> well, um, so basically they do a bit of old fashioned, old fashioned research on, um, Calanthe's bloodline. He can he also kind of wants to know about the monoliths. Um, they tell him basically who the voice was that he saw heard in the last episode when he was down in the chasm with Geralt. Uh, Fenn tells him that that was princess Cirilla of Sintra um, I don't know how she knows, but <laughs> like you said, yeah. everybody knows oh, about yeah. Siri. They, well, and they know things. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> they drink and they know things, although I didn't see them drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they do, um, you know, he mentions something about a gene that is apparent in all the females of this bloodline. Um, can't quite pronounce it, but he spells it out to her when I, and I'm guess, guessing what is elder alphabets. Um, and they look in an old book and find out that, um, they find, basically tell him the story of Lara Doran, who was the elf beneath the tree, the elf in the story. Um, she was, she basically is killed. She has to kill her human lover and, um, is therefore, I believe, killed by humans. And she creates this, um, curse in her bloodline saying that there will be, you know, it's supposed to create a weapon to destroy humanity. Mm -hmm. And then they realize there's a, a, a mistranslation Fen does and that it's not actually mm -hmm. a weapon. It's a warrior. Right. Yeah, that was great. I love that scene. Was, I love those two characters. I hope we get some more uh, from them. They were just, they were fun to watch and fun to have on, on screen. Mm -hmm. the, the, that whole thing was really, really impressive. Um, so my next one is uh, we finally got a creature battle. You you talked about it a little bit already. The the Chernabog. Uh, we've not seen one except for that sewer creature in you know two or three episodes. Mm -hmm. So I, I loved seeing Geralt using his the magic uh, pushing power that that uh, that they have. Uh, that creature was incredible with the wings <laughs> and flying and that face. Um, was was really cool looking, almost rock like, mm -hmm. but then also creature like. I thought was great. Um, that shot of Geralt when he takes the potion and, <sighs> and his eyes go black and he's got the rock face behind him. That's been Netflix's. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but that's been Netflix's screenshot for this season. Sweet. The the entire time. So every time I would pull up my Netflix, I would see that shot and I'm going, when is that shot going to happen in the show? So I love that we finally got to see it, but, uh, but yeah, and that whole thing, it confused me the first time him jumping out of the trees with those branches in his hands. And it looked like he cut the thing in half mm -hmm. with one of those branches. And then he says, where are my swords? And I'm like, where were his swords? <laughs> you know, cause we don't see them anywhere. And then the next scene they're back, they're on his back again. But I, I love that this is also the moment that you alluded a little bit to it where I think they're starting to figure out that these monsters are not trying to kill Siri. I think they're trying to capture mm -hmm. her. And so I, I don't know if they're tied in with the witch or what they're, what they're about. If there's some other force that's directing them. But it just it was so great to finally get another uh, monster battle from Geralt and uh, a monster. I was actually... I had a theory about that, and I don't know because I haven't gone back and done the math to connect the two um, events, but I, I have a theory that every time Siri uses her magic, it summons up another monster through the portals of the monoliths. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and see how many times she used her magic and how many times every time, an, like, when an her a beast visions, came up. Yeah. 
you know, there's the time that she first destroyed the monolith, and then the time that she killed those boys who were coming after her. Um, obviously, well, you know, this last time when she was screaming for Geralt, she was using her magic, and the thing actually, like, cre- was created at that point. Interesting. That that would be that's an interesting. That would be something interesting to go back and rewatch again to to try to figure that out. That uh, that's interesting. Yeah. But the sad result of that monster fight was that we lose Roach. I know. So sad. So sad. Oh. And I love that. It's almost like a prayer that Geralt says over her before he puts her down. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't write it down, but it was it was sweet. I felt so bad for. Yeah. Something about walking. Yeah. Yeah, it was really... I should have written it down, yeah. but I didn't. Uh, it was so sad. And now we have no roach. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, horses don't do well in a lot of these fantasy fiction stories. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. I'll move on to my number two highlight. Yeah. And that is uh, Geralt and Yennefer reunited. And in my notes, it says hot... <laughs> <laughs> so Geralt's sitting in his room and, Oh, go ahead I, I was just going to say th- Real quick about their reunion This is where we hear them say The title of the episode They say it twice uh-huh. <laughs> Dear friend This is my dear friend Oh, I'm a dear friend So it was great That was great So no, go ahead So go on um, AKA friends with benefits <laughs> <laughs> so Geralt's sitting in his room. He thinks Siri's coming in, and he—I mean—he doesn't even have to turn his eyes to see who it is because, as we learned in the last season, every time Yennefer's near, he has there's a smell of lilacs and gooseberries that he can instantly detect. So, um, like you said, Yennefer is referred to as Geralt's dear friend, which Yen doesn't seem all that comfortable with. She's like friend, huh? <laughs> And uh, Geralt admits to Yennefer that um, she is one of the reasons that he chose to claim his child's prize. And he's asking her if she's still trying to find a way to have a child herself. Um, He, at the end there, which I'm sure we'll go over, he makes the mistake of telling Yennefer to take Ciri. He's like, you know, I got to fight these guys. Take Ciri. And Yennefer takes that very literally. (laughs) Yes, she does. I caught that in the second watch. And what? Do you have anything else um, to add? No, I. I mean, that leads us to a badass fight. But I think that's one of my points. One of my upcoming points. Yes, it's it's one of mine as well. So um, I want to talk about the temple a little bit more and what went on. And and, and I, I love that conversation. You, you talked about it a little bit with, with Ninica mm-hmm. and Siri, where she actually says the words, the daughter of chaos. And you see Ninica definitely react mm-hmm. to that, yeah. that, that name. And then <laughs> that conversation with Jare was just hilarious <laughs> about my tool is bigger <laughs> and more powerful. And Siri's like, Oh, your tool just broke my toe. <laughs> you know? It just, it just, it was just, I just laughed the whole time, both times watching it. Cause it was just hilarious. She gives him this really cool look that she just, just, they just nailed that conversation. It was so sad. I hope he's not dead. I hope, He's not. He just got kind of beat yeah. up because it would be fun to see what happens uh, with with the two of them if anything else does happen. I don't know if anything will, but it was just it was just a hilarious to see how uncomfortable he was around her and that she recognized that and kind of played on it. I thought it was really hilarious. I know he's so funny because he he's just. <laughs> He's such a nerd. He comes in there holding his books and you're like, oh, look, he's one of our best students. And he, I could just hear his, him in his head going, oh, pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Was that your your point? That, that's all I had for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, my point was that we finally get to see Geralt in a badass fight. That was cool. Yes. Was I called this. I call this the hand to sword fight is what I called it. But go ahead. I'll take take my, take my points when you're done with yeah. yours. <laughs> so, you know, he he's given up his weapons because in this temple um, temple school, you're not allowed to have any weapons, which makes it really difficult if someone decides to attack the school. 
<laughs> so he's he's just got a hand to hand fight them. But you know, even two humans and a mage against a, a witcher is probably unfair odds. <laughs> He's got super strength, super hearing. He's got magical, um, you know, magical motions and things. That his telekinetics mm -hmm. and his his different powers. So that was sweet. I it, it had a very um, Guy Ritchie vibe to it. If you're a fan of Guy Ritchie's films, thank you. That's what I was trying to remember. I couldn't remember what the the, the freeze framing and the slow motion and the camera panning around Guy Ritchie. That's what I was trying to remember when I was watching it today. Yeah, I think other directors have used it too, but Guy Ritchie uses it in just about every movie he does from mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes to Snatch. But um, mm -hmm. it's a great fight scene. Ugh, and, and it's very bloody too. And we haven't seen a lot of blood gush. Nope, not many waterworks this season, but this one was full of mm -hmm. it. Yes. And then um, as he is busy fighting the two brothers, um, Yennefer and Ciri lock themselves in a room and are basically trying to get away from Rance, who's using his fire magic to burn the door down. <clears throat> and, um, you know, Yennefer can't do anything. She has no magic, but that orboculum or whatever that thing is, the, the giant floating... <laughs> <laughs> a bowling ball starts to glow and Yennefer says that's not my magic that's yours that it's detecting so you know she tell teaches her some elder words she says she's going to teach her the first um uh, spell she ever learned which is not really learned because she did it on accident when she mm -hmm. when she created the portal yeah. to escape in the very first season um but Siri is able to do it and as they're walking out and Geralt has dispatched of the um, the attackers and he's dispatched of Rance, who I believe portals out of there really quickly. Um, yeah, I think I, what I caught the second time was I think um, Geralt throws a sword mm -hmm. at him and I think he portals away. I don't know if it's not really portaling. He's almost a teleportation kind of thing, I think, because he just puffs into like smoke. Mm -hmm. and, and disappears. So I think that's what happened with, with him was he just kind of makes this smoke and disappears but yeah yeah I, he I'm gto sure he out of there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um and as he looks through the burning door he sees uh siri and yennefer walking through the door and it's just so sad it's so heartbreaking he's he's just like yen and she's like he's like don't she's like sorry yeah. sorry pal <laughs> the lady's got to do what she's got to do yeah yeah um, yeah, that, that's, this was my number one point as well was this end fight scene that was so just – it was great from, from the moment when Siri tries to hit the guy with the – hit rinse with, the, with that ball thing and then Geralt, man, I don't know how much of that was, was Henry Cavill. Uh, doing that, but there were some incredible, cool moves. The one where he pushes the guy up, and then as he's falling back down, he stabs uh -huh. him in the head uh -huh. with his own sword. I was just like, oh my goodness, that's just amazing. You know, and then he's like chopping guys' arms off and slashing legs and grabbing. It, it just, it was such a great fight scene. It, and then, like you said, Yennefer taking Siri through the portal. But yeah, I just, and I loved all the camera work that was done in there, like you said, that, that Guy Ritchie style with the stop and the slow motions and just was an amazing, amazing fight scene. And we haven't had that kind of a hand to hand kind of fight scene or, or, you know, man to man kind of fight scene in a, in a while. Mm -hmm. I don't think this season at all, we haven't had it. So it was really great when he, I just knew when he came into that room and, and is trying to get rinsed to, to leave. And he's just like, if you guys stay, something bad is going to happen or something, <laughs> something like that. And rinse is like, mm, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> He's know? like, well, at least <laughs> I'm going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. These two knuckleheads yeah, can keep Michelet you busy for a while. <laughs> yeah, these are the Michelet brothers. And <laughs> they're... So, yeah, it was, it was great. It was just wonderful, wonderful stuff. Yeah, I don't think we've seen him in a hand-to-hand -hand battle like that since um, Blaviken, when he was titled yeah, The Butcher was... of Blaviken, and he took out um, Renfrey's entire band of bandits there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that was the first season, so it's been uh -huh. a while. First episode so. of the first season. Mm -hmm. um, so we got some notes here. Yeah. See, I'm looking through to see what uh, – there's a few of my notes that we haven't talked about. Um, <laughs> I had a WTF moment uh, when Francesca is talking about her the story from her childhood. <laughs> 
And uh, she says she slit her own father's throat and the village wanted to make a stat build her a statue. I was just like, what? How bad was her father <laughs> that that a she kills him and the townspeople are like, hey, we're going to make a statue. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was one of mine. We are on the same wavelength, at least there, because see, my last note here says Francesca's backstory of her and her brother killing her father. WTF? <laughs> I mean, was the only thing I could think of is maybe it was a town full of elves and, you know, she, I'm guessing she's half elf or something. And her father yeah. resented her for that because she showed powers and that's maybe why she ended up killing him. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. But it was, it was just I, one of those moments when both times I was like, what? <laughs> like, um, let's see. I'm looking through my notes to see if there's anything that we haven't talked about. Um, the scars on Rince's face mm. are pretty wicked looking. Um, and they brought up, Geralt brings up the trial of the grasses. I think you, you called that a few episodes ago. The, the, what, that's what the changing, mm -hmm. when they give him the serum to change them into a witcher is called the trial of the grasses. Yeah. Um, the wit, the wild hunt is mentioned again. You, you talked about that before the, it's mentioned again. I was wondering if we mentioned it in the last episode when Siri was in her, her dreamscape there and she looks up and she sees those spectral riders in the sky. I'm assuming that was the wild hunt. Okay. Maybe, maybe so. I'm not sure. I don't think we talked about it the last episode. I think it was two episodes ago mm -hmm. when you, when you brought it up that the guy was going through the town yeah. saying that the wild hunt was coming. The only other thing, oh, a couple of things more that we haven't talked about yet. Kahir fighting Dara. Oh yeah, there in the in the courtyard where, and Dara was holding his own for a little while there. But you know, I mean, Kahir is an experienced soldier and commander, and he, you know, he's going to win that fight. But it was just a just a way to humiliate the elves mm -hmm. a little bit more and, and kind of press them down. Oh yeah, uh, and then we get comp we get confirmation that the owl is this is was looking through Dykstra's eyes. That because I'm because Dara was reporting to the Al there at the end, giving, giving telling him what was going on in Sentra. So again, we don't know what Dykstra offered him or told him. We don't know how they convinced him to be, you know, this, uh, you know, spy for mm -hmm. him. So. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Any other notes that we haven't talked about yet? Um, just mentioning Dara is... <laughs> Siri. okay, so it's maybe been like a few months since the last season. And Siri looks like she's maybe aged uh, maybe a year or so. Dara looked like a 12-year-old boy last season. And he looks like he's in his mid-20s now. Oh my gosh, that kid grew. Yeah, he looks like a... <laughs> He looks like a full grown yeah. man. Like I was, I, I was no wonder they had him like setting down at a table when, when we saw him in the vision. And like, even when he was in the cell, he was just kind of setting down and they, they kind of gave a, 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 a camera angle that was way far away from him. But in this one, yeah, we could definitely see that he has grown up and yeah. So. Maybe elves grow faster than humans, but I was like, wow, he is much more mature looking than he was last year. Um, on my notes, um, we get another reference to Slavic mythology. We, we get to see a Chernabog, who in Slavic mythology is the black god of darkness, who contrasts with the Belabog, the white god of light. The two are locked in an eternal conflict, and the Chernabog and mm. the Belabog are similar to Satan and God, or Ra and Apep, basically the light and the dark. Um, and if you're familiar with Disney's Fantasia, the Chernabog is the huge black demon featured in A Night on Bald Mountain. Oh, okay. You ever seen F Fantasia, Steve? It's been it's been a while. Um, it's it's been a long time. So I gotta say, this was my favorite sequence it, in the show. I remember watching it as a kid. I don't know how many times I actually uh, probably saw, it and I've not gone back to it as an adult. So um, my other thing was: uh, was there any indication before now that Philavandrel was the father of Francesca's child? Because really, when we first see them, they seem like like um, dual politicians or like. You know, they they look like they're they're more political allies than they were romantic partners. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get any sense of that prior to this episode. And this episode, 
it leaned hard into it. So it's, it's for sure. That's his kid, yeah. you know, but I mean, there might've been hints at it in earlier episodes, but I don't think it would, the hints wouldn't have, have taken us to this tender mm-hmm. of a relationship between them. This, uh, you know, it would have seemed like more of, like you said, like a politically arranged yeah. uh, relationship rather than an actual tender romantic kind of relationship. So, so yeah, I'm with you on that. It, it's uh it was a, it was, but it didn't, it didn't jar me at all. Mm-hmm. Like for some reason it didn't stand out as something that, was wrong. Does that make sense? No, I mean, I just found you it know? weird because this whole time they haven't been super um, affectionate with each other, you know? They've kind of been at odds. So I, I had no idea that they were having this baby. But um, so now I he's an elf and she's an elf. So this is the first pureborn, you know, pureborn elf in several years. So that's what is giving the elves so much hope in Sintra. Right. Um, another point is the elves don't seem built for aggression. Um, so Francesca suggests that they really only fight for defense and Philavandrel tells her that, you know, one day they'll be able to appreciate beauty again. And, you know, that kind of gives me the old idea of the elves just being these high, highborn, very, um, aloof kind of species and they just love beautiful things and they don't really fight and they're more peaceful and intelligent. Um, I don't know. Did you get that sense? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why, like when, when I talked about Phil, Phil, Phil talking about how he was teaching the elves to fight in a human way. And I, I kind of wanted to think, well, what's the elven way to fight then? Cause we know that there are elven warriors mm-hmm. But what was their – maybe they had a style of fighting that was different hmm. than – I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I, I definitely got that. that they're, not, they're not used to an aggressive kind of state. Yes. Yeah, that's what I felt like. Uh, we also learned that the humans killed all the fairies, or that's what Philavandrel said when he said that Tara fought like a fairy. And he's like, you killed them all. So yeah. apparently there were more species on the continent than, than we know of. And we got a mention, it was real quick and it got cut off, but I can't remember which character it was, says something about the continent and the islet and talking about like another area, Mm. but it got, it got cut, they got interrupted or cut off before they finished the statement about it. So I'm wondering if there's another section that we don't know about of this planet or, or sphere or whatever this is we don't really know we haven't seen anything like yeah like we don't know the geography Mm -hmm. is the word i'm searching for yeah yeah and as i think about it more you know i believe the spheres are obviously supposed to be planets so you know the humans the elves the monsters they thought they all lived on different planets and and basically the the monoliths which uh, which istrid is theorizing our conduits now we're we're basically like the bifrost (laughs) <laughs> bringing all of mm-hmm. these things, zapping them from from one planet onto the continent, and just meshing them all together. And I thought you were going to mention that we did get a mention of a unicorn too, <laughs> from uh, from oh, Yennefer. I forgot about that. <laughs> we did. Was that in? Was that in the first season or the second season? No, I don't think there's ever been a unicorn. mention of a unicorn. Okay. And I love how she's okay. sitting there kind of to teasing with uh, Geralt to like, you know, <laughs> you have to be very pure of heart to attract a unicorn. <laughs> and uh, a, a little in baseball thing I actually heard from um, some, I wasn't really trying to look for it, but I heard that uh, that comes from the game, the, the game or the book. I can't remember now, but apparently there's uh, some sexual escapades that go on on a stuffed unicorn, and it gets broken. Oh, okay. <laughs> Between Yennefer <laughs> and Carol. Yennefer and Carol, yeah. I, I kind of got I that. I think okay. that was supposed to be a, a, a wink and a nod to the book readers or game players. Right. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Uh, any other notes that we haven't talked about already? Those are mine. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's covered mine, so we'll go into some quotes here. Why don't you start with yours? As Rience and Lydia are speaking together in the tavern about the blood and um, basically what she, he needs to do to get into the temple, uh, Rience's response to Lydia is, better to be on the right hand of the devil than to be in his path. Hmm. <laughs> Which I think was a yes. good saying. And uh, 
we, uh, we, you alerted to it a little bit earlier when uh, Siri reveals to Geralt that she killed the soldiers. Uh, he says, only four. You've got some catching up to do. <laughs> that was nice. And I think it was kind of an, a, a way of uh, Geralt deflecting the guilt that she felt from that because he's like, mm-hmm. oh, I've killed, I've killed way more than four, four guys. <laughs> You've got to right, catch up to right. me. Oh, yeah. It, it was definitely a way of trying to encourage her and telling her not don't dwell on don't dwell on the past. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you mentioned this, too, but I just loved that Yare said, I don't want to brag. But my tool is bigger and much more powerful. And Siri says, your big tool almost broke my toe. (laughs) As he drops his big tool, his gigantic book on her toe. Uh, And then that scene between Ninika and and Siri, uh, Ninika says, that spirit, you're so like him. Ask him to tell you about the Ard incident that nearly destroyed the office you're sitting in. I thought that was just just a funny a funny kind of aside to go. I wonder if we're going to get that story. So the Ard incident because I, I had to I, well, the second time I actually watched it, it is it's it's Ard. It's like a like a noun. A capital A A R D. That's what the subtitles had. Mm-hmm. So I'll be interested to see if we ever find that out. But that was <laughs> I want to ask Geralt about the Ard incident because I want to know what happened. <laughs> uh, and my last one is the interaction between Yennefer and Geralt when Rience and his mob shows up and Yennefer says, what happened to your face, shithead? <laughs> Geralt's like, fire fucker. <laughs> Yen's like, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> they play yeah, so well off of each great. other and I absolutely love it. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I hope they haven't this relationship hasn't been broken uh permanently. So Oh no, I think they're bound by destiny. <laughs> <laughs> um so I looked, I did not see any feedback today. I will make sure to look again next week. I did I did send out a post earlier this evening uh to try to get people to uh to react to it, but I will uh, I will try to be better, uh, panelers, about putting out a post, letting you know to give us your feedback for this week's uh, episode. Um, but for now, uh, podcast recommendations. Really, the the only one that I would think of off the top of my head is Walking Dead has returned, and so Walking Dead cast is back with Jason and Lucy, and I just love their interactions and how they dig deep into an episode and give it. So uh, if you're a walking dead fan, check out walking dead cast. Yeah. And if you're a fan, you get a double dose of walking dead this week. Cause they also just published their interview with Ross Marquand. Ah, cool. Um, well, mine is another podcastica podcast and that's house podcastica. They have just recently wrapped up their coverage of the book of Boba Fett and that I just wrapped up watching it. So it, it was very good timing. And um, I had a lot of fun watching that. That was cool. And I and we got to see some familiar faces in it as well. Yes. But I do have a non-pop culture, non-entertainment recommendation, which I think I can throw out there, hopefully. If there's any yeah, uh, foodies sure. out there in the audience. Um, I really like the Always Hungry podcast with Sophie and Bobby Flay. Uh, I grew up watching Food Network. I'm a total food nerd. It basically taught me how to cook. I was never a big Bobby Flay fan. I thought he was kind of arrogant. But I've been listening to this podcast since it started with him and his his. Um, grown daughter Sophie and they have this great father daughter rapport so even if you're not a foodie it's fun to listen to them talk to each other and and play off each other they're really cool and you have a YouTube recommendation for us this week yeah so me at least I don't know about you but burn butcher (laughs) burn butcher burn has been an earworm in my ear all week uh (laughs) singing it over and over and and I love it the more I more I listen to it if you go to the Dan Vask channel that's V A S C he does a killer metal cover of Burn Witcher Burn he also does a cool metal cover of Toss a Coin to Your Witcher and a bunch of other cover worthy songs so check it out very very cool well, as we say each week, uh, you can hear us on your podcast player of choice, whether that's Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts, wherever you can hear us. We would love to get a review from you. We definitely give you a shout out if that comes up, if ratings are available. Give us a five-star review or a rating, and we would, uh, yeah, on any of those platforms. And check out our new webs. Check out our new website at panels 2 pixels podcast to 
pixelspodcast.com. To submit your theories and feedback on Facebook, you can go to our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And we are on Twitter at panels, the number two pixels. You can also send us an email at panels 2 pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels 2 pixels one the T-O in the middle there, and the number one at gmail.com. And if you're on YouTube, checking out Dan Vansk, also check us out. Just search for Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, and please give us a thumbs up. We are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out in words, Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. Check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them. Wilhelm, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. Go to nextlevelradioonline.com to check them out all out there. And next time we will continue with The Witcher Season 2, Episode 7, which is entitled Voleth Mir. That's my best way I could think of to translate that. That looks like a, that's, that looks right. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Um, obviously you can hear me uh, right here on Panels to Pixels Daphne and I will continue our Snowpiercer coverage uh, with uh, season 3 the next episode I believe is going to be episode 6 I think that we're going to be on next week something like that Uh, Snowpiercer is 10 The Witcher is 8 so it's going to be a little bit of a a, a gap there but and Laura what is your podcast proposal of the week for us? Okay, let me think. This is actually something that may happen. Who knows? I told you I was a foodie, and I am going to call this podcast Put a Crunchy Chili Onion Sauce on That. <laughs> you know, you see a lot of recipes, and it's like, oh, put, in, put a fried egg on that. You know, hamburger, put a fried egg on it. Bowl of rice, put a fried egg on it. Um, I have this condiment sauce that I get from Trader Joe's called the Crunchy Chili Onion Sauce, and it is amazing it is so freaking good it is spicy it is crunchy it is all the good things so i put it on everything and um not only that but it would be a fun podcast to just go through people's pantry and just say okay let's see what we can invent <laughs> you know kind of like you did in college when you were high <laughs> yeah there you go so crunchy chili onion sauce i have to look for that very very cool well again thank you for joining us tonight I'm Steve I'm Laura and this was Panels to Pixels and we will see you on the next panel good night good night